Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video we are going to have a closer look at the Creative Outlier Pro through wireless ANC earbuds. Let's see the details. First I have to tell you that I've got the Outlier Pro from the manufacturer for this test, but no money exchanged hands and no one had any influence on what I'm going to tell you about the product. So the Outlier Pro is the next generation flagship through wireless earbuds from Creative. I do not have any experience with its predecessor, the Outlier RV3, but I did review the RV2 back in 2021. I missed a few features from that model which the manufacturer added to the V3 already, such as wireless charging, active noise cancellation and proper app support, so this time around we did not get such a big upgrade on features, only some fine tuning of sorts. But what Creative improved upon is the battery life of the older buds, and we also got a new design. Well, it's not a complete redesign as the earbuds kept their general shape and size, but the touch sensitive interface is now flat and oval shaped instead of the slightly curved and round surface of the old models. We also got this glossy finish in this metallic umber color, which is not quite my cup of tea, but the buds look sharp and sleek nonetheless. But they are rather huge. Even bigger than the previous generations, and those buds were not small to begin with. The Outlier Pro weighs in at 7.2 grams each, and even though they are big, my main issue is not how much they stick out of my ears, but it's actually how deep they go into my ear canals. And as a result, I can feel a tiny bit of pressure building up inside my ear canals after wearing the earbuds for about a half an hour. I also found that the fit is not tight enough for any intense physical activity, but it's okay for some basic weightlifting or a casual stroll around in town. But that's just me and my rather small ears. Some people with larger ears might have better luck with the fit and the comfort of the Outlier Pro. There are three sets of silicone ear tips in the box, so you might find one that works for you and for your ears. The IPX5 rating makes the earbuds protected against sweat, rain and splashes, so as long as you find them tight enough, you can easily use them in the gym without having to worry about anything. Onto the case, there is not much that changed other than the new color and a bit of an extra weight and size, which only makes the case pocketable as long as your pockets are not too tight. The extra size of the case was a design decision to accommodate a larger battery, which provides the Outlier Pro with almost double the battery life of the Air V3. With ANC turned off and at moderate volume levels, we can achieve up to 60 hours of total playtime, while the buds themselves can run for up to 15 hours on a single charge. Turning the ANC on brings it down to 40 hours and 10 hours respectively. That's of course the best case scenario, but this is a great performance nonetheless. The case can be charged wirelessly on any Qi compatible charging pad or through the USB Type-C port on the side of the tray that holds the earbuds. Beside the USB-C port there are three battery status LEDs as well. I found no evidence of any fast charge feature, but the increased battery life in itself is a great improvement. And I like the fact that they stick to this sliding mechanism, as it works pretty well in my opinion. In terms of connection, we don't get any surprises or upgrades as we have Bluetooth version 5.2 with SBC and AAC. Since the RV3, we got no support for AppTex anymore, but that's alright as long as the connection is solid, pairing is quick and easy, and we have no lip sync issues with movies on Netflix and videos on YouTube. And the Outlier Pro delivers on all those fronts. Single bud mode is supported, but multipoint is not on the menu. The Outlier Pro has an average amount of lag when it comes to playing games but it can be significantly reduced by enabling the low latency mode in the Creative Smartphone app, making the buds suitable for gaming. Next up is phone call quality. The Outlier Pro got a small upgrade as now we have a 3 mic setup on each bud, which picks up my voice clearly without any distortion, so there is definitely an improvement here. But when I turn on some ambient chatter on the speakers in front of me, it does not only take a while for the noise reduction algorithm to kick in, but even after it does, my voice can get lost in the background noise at the time, which can render making a phone call a bit more challenging than I would like it to be, but other than that, it works okay for the most part. We got a touch sensitive interface on each bud, but other than the actual shape and design of the touch controls, most if not everything remained the same. And that's a good thing as the touch controls worked well before and they keep delivering the goodies on the Outlier Pro as well. Due to the large size of the touch sensitive interfaces, the controls are easy to use, reaction times are fast and the functions can be remapped using the custom buttons feature in the app. 
We get play, pause, track, voice assistant and ambient mode controls that can be assigned to either the double or the triple tap actions. The tap and hold action is reserved for the volume controls and it cannot be changed, it can only be disabled. And beside that, not all of the functions are available at the same time. It means that if you want to keep your noise controls and voice assistant controls, then you have to give up the play pause function for example. It's no big deal as you can always opt for having play pause, but then you will only be able to skip to the next track and not back to the previous one. But if you decide to not use play pause to have full volume and track controls, then you have to keep in mind that the Outlier Pro earbuds come without smart sensors, so you won't get automatic play and pause as an alternative option. And there is one more thing that I have to bring up and that's the fact that there is a little tone or an audio prompt being played on both bots every time you use the touch controls, which not only interrupts the music all the time, but it cannot be disabled in the app either. I hope it gets fixed in a future firmware update. And talking about firmware updates takes us to the features of the app. So we can upgrade our earbuds and there is the low latency mode I already mentioned before. But the three main features that you can find on the main menu page are the equalizer, the ANC and the custom buttons. The EQ feature offers you plenty of presets, including some game specific ones, each of which optimizes the sound of your earbuds to a particular game. Well, I believe it does as I actually have no idea how each game is supposed to sound, to be honest, you know. I'm no gamer. But what I am is an audio enthusiast and as such I love the idea that you can create your own custom sound profiles and save multiple of them within the EQ feature. Onto the active noise cancellation, it has three modes. ANC on, ANC off and ambient mode. Both the ANC and the ambient modes have a slider in the app where you can select one of the five different settings between minimum and maximum strength. Interestingly enough, when you toggle through the three main modes using the buds, the app won't update the status only if you go back to the main menu and then back in the noise control settings again. It's rather a small bug than a major issue, but I reckon it's worth mentioning. As for the performance of the active noise cancellation, well, it's not class leading by any means, not even at the maximum setting. We get some attenuation in the lower frequencies, but not quite as much as with the one more Comfobuds Mini, for example, which I tested last week, or the Soundcore Life P3, which I find one of the best ANC bots for under $100. So there is not much bass cancelling action going on and the higher frequencies are blocked out with even less efficiency. In ambient mode we get some hiss but that's normal. At minimum setting the ambient mode is hardly any different from what the ANC off setting can offer and at maximum setting we get a slightly muted and not so intense interpretation of all the surrounding noises. Regardless of what mode we use, we get a fair bit of wind noise and there is no wind noise reduction mode at all. So if I had to describe the active noise cancelling performance of the Creative Outlier Pro with only one word, I would say it's underwhelming. Next up is sound quality. Instead of the 5.6mm graphene drivers in the Air V2 or the 6mm biocellulose drivers in the Air V3, now we got a 10mm graphene coated driver. Compared to the V2, the sound became more bass heavy with a less forward mid-range and a smoother treble. We get a decent bass extension and even some bump in the mid bass, which makes everything sound a bit warmer, but it also tends to have a negative impact on the lower mids, with sound recessed as a result. Vocals are not quite forward enough, and even with some EQing you cannot really make them step out from the shadows if you know what I mean. Treble sounds a bit rolled off, which can be a good thing as I prefer a smooth sound over anything that's too crisp, but if you want something overly excited or airy, then you will have to look somewhere else. Sound state seems to be a bit congested due to the lack of extension in the higher frequencies, but imaging and instrument separation are quite okay. All in all the sound is smooth and warm and you get the option to dial it in according to your taste using the EQ in the smartphone app. But before I conclude this review, I also have to mention that Creative has their own 3D audio technology of sorts, the Super X5, which the Outlier Pro is compatible with. It has its own separate smartphone app as well, in which you can scan your ears and do some further tweaking to the sound of your earbuds, but these changes only have an effect when you play music within the app, and none of it will work with any streaming services I believe 95% of people use these days. So Super X5 might be there, but it probably makes more sense with Creative's own gaming hardware, such as headphones and sound cards, which the technology was developed for in the first place.
And now it's time to wrap up this review. For around $90 or euros, you get a plethora of features and an extremely good battery life with the Creative Outlier Pro. The sound is smooth and warm, the buds look good and they also feel premium even if they are a touch too big for my ears. The app works pretty well and so do the touch controls, we got an IPX5 rating for our workouts, 6 mics for making phone calls and wireless charging. But I feel like we can get any of these from other competitors for around the same price and there is not a single standout feature that would make the Outlier Pro an instant buy. Well, except for the battery life, maybe. And at the end of the day, if you look at the whole package and all the features the Outlier Pro has to offer, that can easily tip the scales in their favor when it comes to making a buying decision. And that's the end of this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.